boy, do I like it when you show up. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It's August 23rd. Now, you probably already are aware that what I do here is I look at OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I see a lot of stuff happening through the day, and I try to accumulate some of that and then share it with you at the end of the day. But of course, I'm not a licensed broker, I'm not a professional trader, so I can't give you any legal advice on what to buy or sell. I'm just sharing my opinion and my DD as I see it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, as I said, we do look at both OTC and penny stocks. Now, a penny stock can be any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's sold on. It can be on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC. Now, we do look at OTC stocks a lot, though, and that's what all that news is. All of that comes from the OTC market. It's news I've personally looked at over the last five days. The oldest news is at the top. Newest news is at the bottom. Now, this is activity news. There's no financials. There's no public offerings. Nothing like that. It's just things they're doing, things that get the stock moving. Juicy news. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my number one go-to site whenever I do research on an OTC stock. For one main reason, it's never outdated. This is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that important and pertinent information we're always looking for. So if you're always going to Google looking for it, you're always wasting your time. I'm not kidding, folks. Just come here. Research should be quick and easy. Save yourself the hassle. OTC Markets is where you want to be initially. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I've already refreshed the page, so I know our numbers are current. Our dollar volume has fallen again. I keep telling you our average is 2.1 billion. We haven't hit it for about a week. We get close, but we just can't get over it, and that's not a good sign. Share volume, we're getting close to 10 billion. Not that that's anything to jump about, but it does seem we do more when we get over 10 billion shares. I would love to see it a lot higher than that though. So we just keep falling under and over just around the 10 right now. And our trades, 250,000 shares. Isn't that what I tell you every day? That's our basement. We are scraping the floor right now. I mean, it can go under it, but this is about where she lays all the time at about 250. So it was a pretty dull market today. Now That's not to say we didn't have any runners. We did, but there was no explosive avalanches or explosions to the moon or anything like that. However, I've got some stocks that you'll want to be looking at. I've got a couple that we've already looked at before, some old acquaintances we need to revisit, and I've got a new kid on the block I want to introduce you to. Now, I know that ticker looks familiar to you. We did talk about this just a few days ago. She was in the news a few days ago, and she ran a few days ago. This is ticker CNGT, Canagistics Inc. Now, where do you remember her from? Well, it all started with a deal between Emergent and Regent Bio Wellness. Emergent is a company on the OTC, ticker EMGE, and they acquired Regent Bio Wellness. And everything went fine. The stock ran. They closed the deal. Voila, perfect. Well, after the deal closed, some news surfaced that did not come up before the deal. It wasn't bad news though, it was good news. It turns out that Region Bio Wellness had an asset that wasn't disclosed. They have a controlling interest in this company, CNGT. They own the most shares of anybody. So this has now become the property, the asset of Region Bio Wellness under the authority of her parent company, Emergent. And today they had a news press come out about the new management stepping in and what their plans are for this company. And she was running, believe it or not. I know it don't look like it right now. She finished today at 0049 with almost 4% drop. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks I tell you to look for, the verified profile and the transfer agent. This is important information. Whether they're here or not, you really do always want to see them. But if you're in a stock for a long hold, this is definitely a must. But if you're just day trading, eh, not too important. But right now, this looks really, really good. Only problem here is she's a shell risk. That means she has a business, but she's not making any money. And that's really kind of what the news press pushes towards today. This company does have products. They made a deal just not too long ago with Canna Works Holdings and got 100% of all of their intellectual property, their patents in Europe, their patents in America, and all their products. Let me give you a heads up to the sort of products they got. You go over to the company's recent financial, 
just put in the word product up in your search bar and boom drops you right down to it because this is a real big document now we're not going to go through all of these but i do want you to get a feel for what they've got going here the company does work with cbd hemp pepsin and other products uh, they've got uh, pain relief topical products that work with CBD and something else. These are FDA approved. Uh, they've got European patents, American patents. They got some sort of thin film toothpaste strips for kids. They have immune boosters. As I said, they work with pepsin, hemp seed oil. They've got fertilizers, lozenges, gums. They've got lots and lots of products here. So they just need to get them manufactured and out onto the market. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Whoa, whoa, that's a lot more than I was expecting. 6.3 million to 91 million. You're looking at 15 times her normal shares. That's incredible, that's a nice jump. Shame it ended up down. Uh, float, I go to the unrestricted shares for my float because that's every share that's allowed on the market. That's what we call the float. So no matter what number they give me down here or DTC, I just trust this one. 211 million, that's our float. Not a great float, but it's not too terrible. Financials, we're probably gonna see a bunch of zeros here, aren't we? Let's see, yeah, we are zeros and on the quarterly, probably see nothing because that's what you get with a shell risk you don't get any income zip and our disclosures anything current here all right our filings are all on time and we do have an 8k here for today and that actually goes with the news press so i'm just going to go to the news press now we don't have a lot of news presses over here and the ones they do give us are really outdated 2015 and 2014 however one snuck in down here a little bit lower. This one came out today. This came out from the new management. Canada 6 Inc. and its controlling shareholder, Region Bio Wellness Inc., recently appointed James W. Zimbler as president, CEO, and chairman of the company. Jim Morrison remains director of the company. These are the two managements of Region Bio Wellness. So this is their company now. They're just stepping into the seats. Mr. Zimbler will guide the company with the assistance and guidance of Jim Morrison and his team at Region Bio Wellness and the new parent company, Emergent Health Corps, in the effort to rebrand and relaunch the entire line of health and wellness products and intellectual property of Integrity Wellness Group under a new brand called the Holistic Company. Now, when they got CannaWorks, that became a new subsidiary of theirs. They renamed it, and they named it Integrity Wellness. That's what CNGT did. Now they just renamed it again to Holistic Company. Now these next pieces of information, I think are the real catalyst here. I think this is what the investors really wanted to hear. In addition to this rebranding and relaunching of the products, the company has also decided to withdraw its previously filed offering. They were going to do a public offering. They were going to put more shares on the market, which was going to dilute the shares and take away shareholder value. They're not doing that now. Yes, but they go on to give us even more news. The company has also advised FINRA that they do not want to rename the company. All right, that's fine. And they do not want to effectuate the reverse split they had planned. It was already filed for. They could just do it anytime they wanted. The old management could have done it. New management has stepped in and they're erasing it. No, we're not doing a reverse split. We're not gonna dilute the shareholders and put any more shares on the market. We're not doing any of that. We're not even gonna change the name. Whew. They're just gonna get the boat moving in the water and start making some revenue. So everything looks great. And the chart, it looks very interesting. I think it's got a little greatness setting up right now. Let's go take a look at that. So we are gonna take a look at CNGT's chart. This is a six month, four hour chart on Think or Swim. It's a free trading platform you can get just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Keep your account open. That's really all you gotta do. And you can use this anytime you like, absolutely free. So CNGT six month, four hour chart. I see I've looked at this before. 
long time ago actually that was december 29th just before new year's and this was a huge run for a couple days now i can't be sure but i'm going to take a wild guess and say that this had to do with them acquiring cannel works getting all those products getting all of that ip that's my presumption and we looked at it one day before it hit its ultimate high of 0 0.024 we looked at it at 0 0.019 now she started down here all the way at double zero one five now to put this in perspective if you take all those zeros away you're going from 15 to 240 wow that is 1300 to 1400 percent gains and we caught it the day before so there was more money to be made the next day but then she crashed and tumbled fell all the way back down here to our very first line at the beginning of the surge was just laying on that for quite a while until the news came out about region bio wellness that made it run again it got it over the 200 up over everything and she is surging again she's had a big bounce here and another bounce up Technicals are strong all the way across the board. Our PPO, which is our percentage price oscillator, very much like the MACD, but the MACD works with the price, where the PPO works with the percentage of the price. Both are pushing up, so both look good. RSI has had a small pullback, as you would expect because of that pullback right there. Let's take a look at the 20-day, one-hour view. All right. I've already got my lines here from the beginning of the surge and the top of the surge. This is when the news came out about Region Bio Wellness having the controlling interest of the company. And that went from the low bubble of 0017 to 0085. Again, just get rid of the zeros. 17 to 85. Woo! That's 500% jump right there. Looks like she gave away just about 50%. We got our mid line here. Now, I do want to give you just a peekaboo here. We're not going to go too deep into it, but you hear me say oftentimes, this is like the Fibonacci. And you're going, what the heck's a Fibonacci? Well, I'm just going to give you an idea here. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci tool. Now, if you poke the bottom of where the surge begins and poke the top where the surge ends, it lays out a graph for you. And it starts off with that 50% line. Now, for eyeballing this, I didn't do too bad. I am just below the true 50% line. You can do it mathematically and get it, but I figure close enough is good enough. But this is where they draw it right there. And then they've got other channels, other supports and resistances that the algorithm has set up. And you'd be surprised how accurate they are. You see how this jumped up? Hit right here, hit right there. These are hitting points and you know they are supports and resistances because the algorithm knows. It knows. So when you see it approaching there, you have to suspect there could be a pullback and we look for that and anticipate it. Now, you don't see me use these very often, but they do come in handy. What you do see me use a lot is that middle line right there. The one line definitely helps me. Many days later, one, two, three, four, five. Five days later, after falling and bouncing off of one of these SMAs, there's quite a few of them there, she is now perched right on top of that 50% mark. Our technicals are showing a little bit of weakness now. They are cooling off. There was a lot of falling today. Let's come on down to that five-day, five-minute. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got a perfect perch. As I said, she is sitting there. The technicals are very cool right now. They don't show a lot going on. We could have a crossover on the MACD, but even that doesn't show a lot of strength. Now, she is sitting on that 50% mark, right? She's right in the middle, and this is a good point. I like her sitting here because this gives her a stronger likelihood of starting to grow again. If she didn't fall and stay down underneath, she got back on top of it, she's in a positive zone. So I expect positive things from her. Now, I would anticipate, remember the very first one we looked at in December? This was the bottom line, that right there is the middle line, and that's the top of the surge. Well, these are algorithm lines that are already in the game, no matter how long ago they were. So I'm anticipating that if the price gets on top of this 50% and starts to show some volume and show some promise and growth, I anticipate that not only is it gonna push up to this high that it got here recently, but that ultimately it is shooting for this 50% mark from December. So right here, it is at 0011, and we are at uh, uh, basically a half a penny. So it's a little over 100% to get there. And I think that's where she would probably shoot to. Of course, 
having to work through this other resistance. So I'd keep my eye on CNGT. They've already given us a lot of good news. They've got a lot of products. We need to see where they're going to go with this. Now, in saying that, there could be more dip. They need news. Obviously, this is a stock that runs on news. Every time there's news, we see a bounce. And when the news stops, she calms down. So don't go jumping in right now. This is a testing area. We want to see if she shows us downtrend or uptrend. As you can see, our ADX, which is our trend master, it is going sideways. It doesn't even know what the trend is. So we're going to wait to see what goes on here. But I thought you might be interested in seeing what was going on with this stock. I get the feeling you're totally familiar with this stock as well. This is ticker NUVG, Nuvis Growcore. They just had a reverse merger not too long ago with Pro Music Rights. Now, Pro Music Rights is the fifth public performance rights organization ever formed in the United States. Now, it's just easier to think of them like a talent agency, but they got a lot of clients, 2.5 million clients that they are supporting. And they have their music licensed out to hundreds of places. That's what they do. They want to get paid every time one of their clients' music is played anywhere. And they've got licenses with TikTok, iHeartMedia, Triller, Napster, 7Digital, Vivo, and hundreds of others. Now, when we first covered this, it was running. And I said, yeah, I can see why everyone's excited. This is a big organization, but what are they worth? We have no idea what they're worth because they're a private company. Their financials were not publicized. So we had to wait until they publicized them. Well, that happened three days ago and the stock hasn't moved a whole heck of a lot. So today they came out with a news press about those financials and we did get a bounce out of it. But I think there's more to be gotten. I think the charts are just setting up for another surge. So she finished the day at 0.0751, just over seven and a half cents with 41% gains. She's on the pink tier. They are current. They've got a verified profile and transfer agent looking good and they've got independent directors. So they may have an idea idea of uplisting here soon. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, now that is surprising. Wow. Wow. She's only doing 765,000 shares a day, not even a million. And today she did less than that, less than half a million shares, almost 50% of what she normally does. And still the price went up 41%. Imagine what could happen when we get some volume in this thing. What's the share structure on this? Is it going to help any? Oh yeah, we got a low float here, 13 million. Oh my goodness. Look at the outstanding shares here, folks. 3.5 billion shares are out there. Now somebody has to own all those shares. There's only 13 million that can be sold to the open public. All the rest are owned by insiders. Whoa. So they got a lot and we got a little, just the way we like it. Financials, I don't think you're going to see anything for the company. That's why they had the reverse merger. Absolutely got nothing going on. And disclosures, I think the only disclosure we have is the financials for Pro Music right there. But we can also get this just a little easier by going over to the news, which came out today. 823 industry market leader Pro Music Rights Inc. announces Q2 2022 results with $432 million in assets with significant share value increase for shareholders. Now, it's not a very big news press, but they do give some real important information here. Pro Music Rights Inc., one of the world's largest music licensing companies, today announced financial results for its second quarter into June 30th, 2022. Now, the question is, what is the company worth? And that is exactly what they tell us. But they go one step further, which is the real reason I think this stock is going to run. They tell us what the shares are worth now based on what they're worth. So they tell us here that the assets, not their revenues, their assets, what they're worth, increased to $432 million in the second quarter of this year compared to $323 million, which is where they were at at the end of last year. So they have gone up over $110 million in the last six months, and they are now worth almost a half a billion dollars. So what is that worth to the shares? Well, they say each share now is worth 12 cents. And considering that yesterday the price of the stock was 0 0.053, they say jumping to 12 cents would give you 128% gains. Well, where are we at right now? 0 0.075, seven and a half cents. We've still got almost a nickel 
to get the 12 cents. And I'll tell you folks, people will read that and they will see that this is a value stock now. It's undervalued. It's only at seven and a half cents. It's got room to climb and I think that's the reason it's gonna climb. Let's go take a look at that chart. That is a six month, four hour chart for NUVG. We have looked at it before. We can see our lines there. This was when the news came out that Pro Rights was gonna merge with NUVG and it was a huge jump. Oh my God, was it huge. It went from about two cents to 48 cents. Wow, you're looking at 24 times your money. A $100 bill made you $2,400 up here. Then she came tumbling down, almost hit the 200 here, rolled back up, was riding across the 20, then did hit the 200 and is now bouncing off of it. Technicals show pretty much all of that and it looks like there is a recovery setting up right now. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Lots of volatility. She's dropped here from 19 cents down to a nickel just two days ago. She has bounced off that low bubble, but the hard way. I mean, she went up and came right back down. Looks like she actually tagged it a second time and is bouncing off of that. And here comes our 200 day SMA. Technicals do not look strong right now. They don't even look like recovery at all. Let's come down to that five day, five minute. All right, so we had 10 cents three days ago, five cents two days ago, and right now we're at seven and a half cents, and they say it is worth 12 cents up here. So, oh, that's the wrong line. <laughs> we were going to be putting up our Fibonacci again. All right, right up here is where they say the stock is worth. So we are looking at. Uh, Oh, about a 60%, 75% gain there. If we can get above the 200, there's a good likelihood she will push there. I do think the news will be the catalyst to get it there. I can't promise anything, folks, but I'd be watching NUVG for at least a 65, 75% jump right up near that 12 cent mark. If she gets up here, I would think about selling right there. Don't be waiting for it to get over 12 cents. Just take your money and let it fall and then get into it when it's down here again if you really like this company. Now it's time to introduce you to the new kid on the block. This is ticker AWON, A1 Group. You know, as I'm trading through the day, I'm looking for which stocks I'm gonna share with you. And I had my lineup all set up, but Towards the end of the day, this stock poked its head up and I hadn't seen it all day. So I did a little bit of research on it and it's like, ooh, there's some potential here. So I decided to share this one with you instead. So ticker AWONA1 Group finished the day at 0088 with almost 63% gains. They are on the pink tier, but it's limited information. That means they're late on one or more of their filings, which they have to get caught up in a timely manner. If they don't, they could face being pulled off the open market and being put onto the expert market. And they'll stay there until their filings get caught up. So it's just easier to get your filings done while you're on the market. Uh, they do have a transfer agent verified, but we do not have a verified profile. Hopefully that's gonna come soon. And they are a shell company. Shell company means that they don't have any business, so they're not making any money. And everybody knows that, so it's kosher. So we're just waiting for something to happen. Well, something's happened. Now, all of the information on this page has been updated. So their new business description is updated. They tell us that the company has finalized the change of control to new management. The company will be engaging in the development of electric recreational vehicles and standard row use electric. The company intends to focus on the development of the electric car, recreational battery technology in general. Now they do have a few pieces of news that we're gonna poke our heads into, but this is really what it's all about, was a tweet. Now this tweet came out today. It tells us that AWON, order approving termination of custodianship has been granted. News of merger coming. Same president that had SHMP that went from one cent to a dollar, nice share structure. Okay, share structure isn't bad. We haven't got to that yet. We'll look at it. Uh, same president as Shimp. Shimp is a shrimp company and they did have some huge runs. So we've got the same man in this company now. News of a merger coming. Well, 
I know that they are looking at making deals, but I haven't seen anything actually about a merger, but that's not to say it isn't out there. But there is something sitting on the table right now. But what I really want to point out is that order approving termination of custodianship has been granted. This is a court document. Now, they're not going to put it in a news press. They don't have to. Lots of people do, but not everybody. And unless you have access to court filings, you probably wouldn't be aware of this. You can get access through sites like RE Filings, or you can go directly to the Secretary of State's websites. But you got to remember, there's 50 of those. That would be a lot of work. Well, this was a court order that came out on August 20th, order approving termination of custodianship. Now, custodianship kind of think of it as probation. When a company is in really bad shape, they put an overseer into the company to make sure things are going right. That's a custodian. And the company can't do anything without the custodian saying yes or no. Well, August 20th, they terminated the custodianship. So the company is on its own now. Now, what's really interesting is that this came out August 20th. Well, I went through all the tweets on this company. There was no tweets August 20th. 21st or 22nd about this it came out today and today is when the stock started to run right so what was the relative volume around this company today well she normally does about a half a million today she did almost six million so there was some activity to be talking about share structure isn't bad we got 113 million here we can live with that financials they've got nothing because they're a shell company they were making some money a while ago, a long while ago. Disclosures. All right, what do we got here? All right, their financials. We are late on some of them. Which ones are we late on? You can normally tell there is uh, the quarterly for 330. Uh, there's the 1230, 930. We don't have the one for 630. We're definitely missing that. So maybe it is just the last quarterly report that we are missing right now. And we've got nothing new down here. So let's take a look at the news. Now the news really fills us in on everything that this company's doing. And they have been working behind the scenes while the custodian's been around. I went all the way back here to August of last year. And I went into a CEO update to see what I could find. And they talked about bringing in the new president, Ian Dixon, who had ideas of turning the company into electric vehicle company. And he talked down here, in the coming months, the company will seek additional funding via accredited investors for its development of the UTV prototypes, as well as setting up a small manufacturing facility to develop different models and accessories of what A1 Group is calling the prototype, Hunter Series 1. The company will also seek additional methods to increase shareholder value. And then we see that they got their website completed here in February, and this is the website. Right there, there's their prototype, the Silent Hunter. This is the European version. They do want to start selling them over here in America as well, but they say it's going to be a little bit different. Now, the Silent Hunter is called the Silent Hunter because you don't hear anything. It is dead quiet except for the tires rolling across the ground. That's all you really hear. And they've done a lot of extras for these vehicles because these are like out there. You go out, you may not have to come back for a very long time with these vehicles. Not only does it have the lithium battery that you fully charge before you take off, but you've got all these solar panels on here as well, so you're constantly getting recharged. And then on top of that, they say that they have a couple extra extra lithium batteries that are stored on the vehicle that can interchange with the one you've already got in there. So it's a great vehicle. They've got a great idea. It isn't happening yet, but everything is about to happen. The custodian is gone now and they're ready to get things moving. So I think this is a company to keep your eye on simply because they've got the green light. They've got plans and they're ready to go. I don't know how much money they've got around to use. I don't know if they have any big investors, but they've got plans and they've got the green light. Let's go see what that chart looks like. Looks like an atypical OTC chart to me. This is AWON six month, four hour view. We got a high bubble six months ago, just over a penny at 0 0.017. And about two weeks ago, we have a low bubble of 0038. She has been under the 200 the entire six months. She's had three attempts trying to break it, 
failed all of them except today. And today she's actually remained over it, believe it or not. Right there is where we are at, at 0088. She hit a high of just over a penny. We got lots of volume today. PPO is strong, pointing up, just crossed the pink line. Our MACD just crossed the signal line. Big green bar here, and our RSI is at max. It is just about to go into the overbought at 69.3. Our 20-day, one-hour view. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, looks like she was trying to press up to the 200-day SMA, which just came into the picture. She was under the 50, started pushing up, couldn't quite make it, fell back down, and then today she took off. But see how late in the day it was. That's what I said. I didn't see this until quite late in the day. And she did have a good run. Technicals are very strong. Everything is still pushing up. Looks like it still wants to run. We do have a little bit of pullback on the RSI. Five-day, five-minute view. So she started her run here at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was pretty steady. She hit her high bubble, and she's had a pullback, and now she's sitting up there, and she's well above her 50% mark. If we draw our lines here, just to give you an idea, 50% would be somewhere about there, and we're way up here. So we're looking good here. The SMAs look strong. The volume has tapered off a little bit here. I can see we have some pullback going on all the technicals, and we have a negative crossover on the MACD. But this has just come out. The news has just come out that the custodian is out of there. People are just learning what this company is about, and the company should be coming out with the news press. Hopefully, cross your fingers. So they're sitting on the edge of having things happening. So. Just put AWON on your list. I don't know that she's going to run tomorrow, but she is set up to start doing something, and that's when we get runs. So after a time period of silence, we're going to get that news press and probably get a good bounce. If you're still hungry, I've got some leftovers for you. A few stocks I was looking at today that we just didn't have time to focus in on. So I'm going to give you the ticker, and I'm going to give you the catalyst, and I'm going to let you take it from there. This first one, ticker WINT, Wintree Therapeutics, had a great day. Lots of trades, lots of activity. Finished the day at 70 cents with 52% gains. They're on the NASDAQ, so this is going to be free to trade, and you can trade at pre-market, after-market. And they've got a low float to boot, 22 million. Well, this company had news come out today. They took one of their drugs, Aerosurf, and basically sold the drug, if you will, to two companies, Lee's Pharmaceutical in Hong Kong and Jockey Pharmaceutical in China. And the greatest thing about this is this company no longer has any expenditures with this drug. Nothing. Not commercialization, manufacturing, packaging, distribution, advertising, nothing. These two companies have taken over all of the liabilities. And all this company gets now is money. And they're going to make $78.9 million in development, regulatory, and commercial milestone payments, plus low double-digit royalties as well. Another company that caught my attention today was AVYA. Avaya Holdings finished the day at $1.11 with 39% gains. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. Their float is under $85 million. That's the best I can say. Now, what caught my attention was Form 4 came out yesterday. This is a form whenever insiders buy or sell shares of the common stock. Well, this is a 10% owner of this company. And these are purchases he has made since the 9th of August till the 19th of August. All of these shares he has been buying. But on top of that, he has been playing options on his stock as well. He has been betting that the price was going to drop and then exercising the options. What that means is he's not taking the money, he's cashing in and he is getting shares. So he got all these shares as well added on. So this man is accumulating shares in the company like wildfire right now. Why? What's about to happen? And the last stock we're going to drop in your lap was one we actually looked at yesterday in our current market list. Tips. Tinrong Internet Products and Services. It ran again today. It ran yesterday about 62%. Had about uh, 141 trades. Today it finished 27, let's call it 28 cents, with another 
51% gains. And the only reason it's really running was a tweet. They had a tweet yesterday, good morning TIP shareholders, we have just had word from the auditor that the TIPS audit is complete and that they will sign off it on it imminently. They are just awaiting a few backup documents from Wilton. As soon as the audit is signed off, we will post it on the OTC markets. And they had another tweet back in February where they said they were going to be fully reporting, which is what this is all about, but they also made it sound like they were going to uplist to the QB, in my opinion, which they're not, but I think a lot of people may think that. So she was running yesterday and today she might run again tomorrow so there's a nice variety of stocks for you you got CNGT and AWON who are still in the midst of finishing their deals we're not quite sure where they're gonna go pro music rights well now we know what they're worth we're just gonna watch that stock climb and then you got three tickers there with some catalysts so that you can consider those remember folks all of this comes from just looking and listening online there's lots of information out there DD is awesome the more you know the more you're gonna grow see you folks